Oh, sometimes it would almost be normal, but most of the time it was never normal. Doctor, what is that called? It's called the strangled voice spasmodic dysphonia. And, and what causes it? They're talking in the lower throat. My take on it is that <clears throat> it's misuse and abuse. The medical community is saying it's an unknown cause, and they look to medical or neurological cause, and I'm reporting cures of this condition for over 25 years. <clears throat> Okay. By direct voice rehabilitation. It's a different approach. She's such a beautiful woman, and mm. she sounds like a very old woman. Yeah, when I spoke spoke with her by phone, when she called... You thought you were going to talk to somebody who's what? 120. 120. <laughs> that yeah. must be very embarrassing. I would think so. How did you find the doctor? Well, I went through... 34 years of searching. Uh, I tried absolutely everything. I went to every doctor in that. It's like I'm talking to a different person. <laughs> you are? Oh, yeah. You are. Oh, that's so scary. <laughs> so you tried everything. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. And as a uh, last resort, I had tried botulism four times. And after I had the Botox treatments, my voice got worse. Uh, it got so bad that I was only able to whisper. Uh-huh. And I thought, what else? I have no recourse. And they wanted me to come back for additional Botox injections to adjust the dosage. But they'd already adjusted it three times. And it just got worse. So I decided to go with the Maverick over here, Dr. Cooper. And I thought, what else do I have to lose? 34 years, and I had nothing to lose. She uh, is so pretty that she was in beauty pageants, but you didn't, you didn't have to speak very much, did you? Oh, yeah, I just walked on stage, and they said, hey, she looks good. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Let me have something, Sarah. Dr. Martin Cooper is the author of Stop Committing Voice Suicide and Change Your Voice, Change Your Life, and he says he can change anyone's voice. What do you want to ask him? Oh, I don't want to ask him anything. I'm just saying that uh, after four weeks, I I'm, my personality is back. I had become withdrawn, reclusive. I had gone to psychiatrists, acupuncturists, every kind of doctor you could think of. And all of a sudden, when I got my voice back, it's like, hey, the old girl's back. Look out. <laughs> The most common voice problem is a tired voice, a misused voice, it fatigues. But she had no voice. I told her when she called me that I believe I can help her come in. And she tried everything. Her speech therapist wasn't able to help her. She heard me at a medical conference, and she referred her in. How long did it take me to find your real voice? Well, it took uh, my real voice. He picked up about... Oh, uh, five seconds. Uh, <laughs> really? I have somebody God. for you. Can you... Uh, some, we have somebody who would like to change her life. Her name is Kelly. Do you mm -hmm. think you could help her? If Kelly wants to change, I believe I can help almost everyone. Ah, okay. The individual has to want to change if they find that the voice is rewarding for them. And we're back in studio. As we were watching this, what was your comment before? Oh, um, um, wait a minute, um, I prayed that I would never have to have a Botox shot again, but, um, because they frightened me so much to have to have them, they scared me when you have a needle into your throat mm -hmm. and they don't know the right dosage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you don't know if it's going to work. I prayed that I would never have to have one again, and I'd rather live with a no voice than have to have another well, one. Well, Sylvia, that we just saw, didn't want any more Botox. She had four. She prayed that she would get her strangled voice back rather than have to endure a more Botox. My, my whole uh, position is very simple. When Botox is not working for the individual, you had nine Botox shots. How many do you feel were effective for you? Probably one was effective, maybe two. Okay, two of, of nine, and you didn't want any more? No, I, before I even heard of you, I made a conscious decision. I'm not doing this again. It's, mm. It was no happiness in my life. 
Did they ever give you an alternative? Did they tell you that Dr. Mort Cooper reports cures? We they know. never mentioned you. Never. I send them information. I have ongoing cures. I have cures from the top medical centers, from the top you know, throat doctors and neurologists, and I've been doing this for 35 years. They know I exist. Now, my position is very simple. If something doesn't work, wouldn't a physician for himself and his family like to have choice? And if somebody tells them there's no hope, get a second opinion, a third opinion. When they tell you you have spasmodic dysphonia, it's a death sentence. They're guaranteeing that there is no hope. Now, I'm sorry to call them Dr. Doom, Doom, and Doom Incorporated, but that's what they're doing. And I see, I see those in the medical profession who know better, who are aware of what I'm doing. One of the top ear, nose, and throat doctors on the faculty at UCLA head and neck division, his wife was diagnosed with spasmodic dysphonia. He had the option of free surgery. At that time, it was surgery, free. He elected to send his wife to me. She was cured of her SD, and he gave me a testimonial. But the issue is not only that I have cures of spasmodic dysphonia, that's one point. The issue is, do patients know? Are they aware they have choice? And the answer is, did they tell you there's choice? No. What? I had no hope. No hope. No cure. Just Botox. The medical profession <laughs> guarantees there are no cures. Guarantees it. My field, the American Speech Hearing Language Association, guarantees there are no cures. Yet I run ads in the American Speech and Hearing Association that there are cures. I have peer-reviewed cures in 1980 in a prestigious international journal. But the American Speech Language Hearing Association insists officially there are no cures. They're in part tied to the National Spasmodic Dysphonic Association, funded by Allegan, the maker of Botox. Both of these organizations guarantee there are no cures. The medical profession guarantees there are no cures. They give you no hope. I'm the only one out there. Speech therapy has failed, incidentally. There are no cures reported by speech therapists in the American Speech Language Hearing Association, and they prohibit me from publishing in those journals. So I run ads. Now, the book that I have out is free to you. It's called Curing Hopeless Voices, The Strangled Voice, parenthesis, spasmodic dysphonia, and the subtitle is An Alternative to Botox. There is no alternative to bo Botox for spasmodic dysphonia. If it works for you, that's great. If it doesn't work for you, why don't the physicians and the academicians provide choice of treatment? That's what I'm after. They never gave you choice. No. How did you find me? Um, my sister-in-law hmm. happened to be out to dinner. She sat down to a man, next to a man who had spasmodic dysphonia. Mm -hmm. And um, he was looking into a Dr. Morton Cooper, mm -hmm. and he had read about Scott Adams. And she passed the information on to me. Who's Scott Adams? He, he's a cartoonist who uh, creates Dilbert mm -hmm. every week. Do you know what you know what Scott Adams said about me? Yeah. It's a seven page blog, it's free, you can get it on my website. It will be shown at the end of the show. He said it's a life uh, change for him. Right. Right. He's very positive. Uh he had five Botox shots. Two worked, he said. Uh two didn't. Uh, the fifth was iffy. Uh he didn't want uh, Botox for life for the rest of his life. And his voice was uh not certain he needs his voice. So I helped him. Right. How much help do you think you're getting from me? Um, um, major <laughs> help. Major help? <laughs> yes. You know exactly I, you what you're doing. I'm, I'm going to maybe have some solution. Yes. Yes. Why do you feel you're having some solutions with me? Because I can You had speech therapy. For five months. Yeah. You're here for a week. Why do you feel you're getting help with me and not with the speech therapist. Because you you found my voice. First of all, you've had 35 years of experience. Mm -hmm. You Reporting hear, cures. Right. Reporting cures. And then some. Um, you hear mm -hmm. 
be here right away. What is what? What's going on, my boys? And within minutes of meeting you, you found my natural voice. No, my feel says that's impossible. I can't do that. Well, you did. I know. You right. just saw Sylvia. It took me right. five seconds. Yes. Your breathing is reversed. It's still not right. Yes, but it's reversed. We, I told you that. Right. The medical profession is saying that the reason it's reversed is because you have a dystonia. You cannot change that symptom. It's a symptom of a dystonia and a, a neurological problem. I don't I'm, believe that. I'm changing it. Yes, I know that. I'm doing it. So they're wrong then by what they're saying. Right. Now, my concern is, does the patient understand they're making what is natural abnormal by reversing the breathing, by talking in the lower throat down here instead of talking up in the face? Can you say, mm-hmm? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Now, can you jiggle it up there? Mm-hmm. Could you do that when you first mm-hmm. came in? No. No? No, I can do it now, though. Do you hear your voice coming out? Yes. I've had nine Botox shots. The first one worked successfully, the rest of them. Okay. Do you hear the difference in the voice? Yes. Do you feel more comfortable with what I'm telling you, that there's hope? Yes. Does um, it relax you when you know there's hope? Yes. They Makes told me happy. Yes. They told you there is no hope. Right. They guaranteed it. Mm-hmm. Do you think, do you believe, folks, that the physician guaranteeing something to their own family, saying if they had SD, that there is no hope that would make their family happy? Would the physician want to do that? I'm just asking, why do they tell the patients there's no hope when I'm reporting cures for 35 years? I don't guarantee anything. I simply report cures, ongoing cures, recoveries, and voice improvements. because. The problem that you have, Mary O'Donnell, is not caused by a neurological problem. It's not ca- caused by a basal ganglia. It's, it's not caused by a chemical imbalance. It's not caused by a gene problem. It's not a rare disease. It's not a psychiatric problem. It will become one if you don't get your voice back. You talk like that. And that, that's awful. People's eyes are popping out. Their necks are spasming. Their body is spasming. That's coming from the misuse of voice. Now I'm just going to make this point. If you have a cramped leg, do you believe that the physician should Botox the leg? No. I no. Like, no. No. Do you believe they should do surgery on the leg? Or a cramp? No. Right. No. All you have to do is stretch the heel of your leg forward and the cramp will disappear. I'm saying stretch the voice, get it out of the lower throat and put it up in the mask. Change the pitch. Change the pitch. Hum your way to a better voice and get the breathing right. And you don't have to have Botox, possibly. If Botox is working for you, fine. If it's not working, there's an alternative. Do you like the alternative I'm giving you? Yes. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much improvement have you made in one week? Oh. Maybe four. Four? I made a big improvement in the beginning, Mm -hmm. and now it's gradual. Right. Do you hear your voice coming out? Yes. At times I do, yes. I know. You have to work for consistency. Right. I'm Ward Cooper. The title of the program is called Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. When you do that, you certainly do change your life, as Scott Adams says uh, he's the cartoonist for Dilbert. Thank you for joining with me. The Botox Voice. Is it working for you? Bye-bye.